Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to another class on reading drama. So today we are going to start with the Act Three of Arms and the Man. So we have already discussed Acts One and Two. So I am not going to repeat the story in detail, but as of now, I think you know all the characters like uh, the Petkoffs, Major Petkoff, Catherine, and Raina. Raina used to be really romantic in the first act, until she met. a strange man in the middle of the night who bumped into her room and threatened her first even though he's a soldier thus shattering all her ideas of an ideal and romantic figure of a soldier um so somehow she feels sorry for this man and she decides to save him from the uh, serbian army uh, from bulgarian army uh, she is a bulgarian and he uh, seems to be a swiss man a mercenary uh serving in uh, the serbian army so she and her mother catherine they in between act 1 and act 2 they somehow save this man and in act 2 we see the return of major petkoff and sergius from the war front uh four months after the happenings of the act 1 and uh, we see the kind of relationship between the family members and we also see sergius coming back and it is revealed that sergius and raina seems to have some kind of lofty and romantic relationship with each other far removed from any reality whereas sergius and luca they seem to have an ongoing affair with each other which nobody else in the house is aware of and we also it is also revealed that nicola the man servant of the household is uh, engaged to luca but there seem to be an engagement of convenience and uh, by the end of act 2 we also see captain blanchley that's the name of the man from the midnight adventure of rainus she he comes back to the petkoff house in order to return the coat in which he was smuggled off to safety in so the coat actually belongs to major petkoff and uh, while he was away at war um, he, these women they dressed Uh, the fugitive soldier in major petkoff's uh, outfit and they sent him away and uh, there's one another detail that is very important when uh, major petkoff and sergius saranov comes back home they talk about a particular meeting a particular swiss officer in the serbian army uh, who had an adventure in which he was running away from the fusilade when he was saved by two bulgarian women who seem impressed with uh, his manners uh, his uh, commercial traveler's manners that is what he says so we know that this particular person is the is our captain blanchley and uh, raina and catherine knows about it but major petkoff and saranov they are completely oblivious to it and uh, thus a dramatic irony takes place in the drama now let's see at the end of cap uh, act 2 we see that uh we see that captain blanchley is actually invited to stay at the petkoff house till he leaves to switzerland so that is actually complicating the situation further up now let's see what happens in act 3 so this is the setting of act 3 let me just read you the long stage directions while i give you this picture of what is happening on the stage when act 3 starts so this is the stage setting when act 3 opens uh, so the setting is in the library after lunch so uh, we have been hearing about this library from act 1 onwards when uh, the fugitive came to raina's room she boasts about her family that hers is not an ordinary family we are the only family in bulgaria to have a private library in the house itself so this is the library she is talking about and if you see how many books she has it's only a few worn out paperback novels that is what is uh, shown here uh, so the setting is library after lunch so the happenings of act 3 takes place on the same day as act 2 act 2 nadanathu breakfast kanjittanengil act 3 lunch kanjittulla samayathana and then it is not much of a library it its literary equipment consists of a single fixed shelf stocked with old paper covered novels broken back coffee stained torn and thumbed and a couple of little hanging shelves with a few gift books on them the rest of the wall space being occupied by trophies of war and the chase 
So uh, I have mentioned it in this table here. Petkoff Library is quite disappointing. It is one shelf with old novels. Then there are a couple of hanging shelves. And the rest of the wall space is taken by trophies of war. If you can see here, there are all kinds of misfitting instruments in this particular place. And uh, about uh, the other settings, I'm not going to read very thoroughly the, these stage directions. Uh, you can see windows which actually shows us the panoramic vision of the Balkan mountains. You know, in the mountains are kind of better than that. And uh, uh, on one side of the um, library, you can actually see uh, a, a square earthenware stove. If you do side light to stove, which is quite out of place in a library. But you have to understand that this is a cold country. And in order to heat up the um, room, the, the library, they might be using old stoves, stove in the room. Also, uh, library is actually full of luxurious things like the curtains and all extremely luxury luxurious cushions and carrying very luxurious one thing is a misfitting thing an out of space thing that is a kitchen table they are using a dining table as a writing table as i mentioned in the first act itself in this household everything seems to be out of place there seems to be a mixture of cheapness and luxury luxury in this house I mentioned the uh, reason uh, for that too. This might be a nouveau rich, fa rich family. They might have come uh, very recently to wealth. They might have acquired wealth quite recently. And that is why they haven't got rid of their middle class manners and attitudes and all. So that is why we can see a mixture of things. Also, this place is Bulgaria, which uh, still has the influence of Turkish, Ottoman, Muslim Empire and a Christian Empire, a Western um, culture civilization so there also you can actually see why there is a mixture of things and objects in uh, the rooms in this household and then other things are uh, there is an ottoman a uh, furniture and uh, then uh, Blanchley and Sergius they are seen working on something actually Blanchley and Jolie Ellen Chayna you can see this is Blanchley in this particular uh, enactment of this so Blanchley is actually drawing a lot of orders because in act two uh, at in the final part of act two uh, captain uh, sorry major Petkoff and Sergius were having trouble finding the perfect route to send cavalry to a place called Philippopolis and uh, Captain Blanchley is actually quite efficient in things like this. So in this scene, you can actually see Captain Blanchley is doing everything single-handedly. He doesn't want any help because his trade knowledge is that much better than these other two men. So he is doing all the work. Sergius is sitting very relaxedly and uh, Petkoff is also relaxing. He has a newspaper in his hand. We also see Catherine on the, uh, in a corner. She is uh, sitting uh, doing some embroidery work. And we also see Raina near near one of the windows. Actually, in the original drama, there is supposed to be window cushions. Window is a wide eye window sill. And Raina is apparently reading a romantic novel and she is quite lost looking dreamily out at the Balkan Mountains. Just like we saw her in the first act, she is looking outside and enjoying the beauty of nature in this particular scene. So that is how we find everybody in the beginning of Act 3. Let's see what goes on in Act 3 when it starts. So when it starts, you see all the crucial characters, all the important characters are in the scene itself, in the stage, on the stage itself. Now, now let's see what drama ensues after this. So at this point of the play, there are so many characters on stage and there are only three of us reading this drama for you guys. So Amal, my uh, cousin, will be reading two characters, Major Petkov and Major Sergius Saranov. So Petkov so he has put on some makeup on his hair uh, and he, when he reads Sergius, he will be putting on a, a hat. And I will be reading Catherine and Raina. So while reading Catherine, I'll have a hat. And while reading Raina's dialogue, I'll take off the hat. And uh, Joe will be reading uh, Captain Blanchley and also Nicola when he enters. So keep that in mind when you listen to us.
Are you sure I can help you in any way, Blanchley? I'm quite sure, thank you. Sorry enough and I will manage it. Yes, we'll manage it. He'll find out what to do. Drop the orders and I'll sign him. Division of Labor. Blanchley passes him a paper. Another one? Thank you. He plants the papers quietly before him, sets his chair carefully parallel to them and signs with the air of a man resolutely performing a difficult and dangerous feat. This hand is more accustomed to the sword than to the pen. It's very good for you, Blensley. It is indeed to let yourself be put upon in this way. Now are you quite sure I can do nothing? You can stop interrupting, Paul. Yeah, uh, oh, quite right, my love, quite right. Um, you haven't been campaigning, Catherine. You don't, you don't know how pleasant it is for us to sit here after a good lunch with nothing to do but enjoy ourselves. There's only one thing I want to make me totally comfortable. What is that? My old coat. I'm not at home in this one. I feel as if I were on a parade. My dear Paul, how absurd you are about that old coat. It must be hanging in the blue closet where you left it. My dear Catherine, I tell you, I look there. Am I to believe my own eyes or not? Catherine carefully rises and presses the button of the electric bell by the fireplace. What are you showing off that bell for? She looks at him majestically and silently resumes her chair and her needlework. My dear, if you think the obstinacy of your sex can make a coat out of two old dressing gowns of rainness, your waterproof and my macintosh, you're mistaken. That's exactly what the blue closet contains at present. Nicola presents himself. Now, Catherine. Nicola, go to the blue closet and bring your master's old coat here. The braided one he usually wears in the house. Yes, madam. Catherine? Yes, Paul. I bet you any piece of jewelry you'd like to order from the Sovia against a week's housekeeping money that the code is in there. <laughs> Done, Paul. C comes here an opportunity for some sport. Who bet on it? Blanchley, I'll give you six to one. It would be robbing you, Major. Madam is sure to be right. Bravo, Switzerland. Major, I bet my best charger against an Arab mare for Reina that Nicola finds a coat in the blue closet. Your best char... Don't be foolish, Paul. An Arabian mare will cost you 50,000 livres. Really, mother, if you are going to take jewellery, I don't see why you would grudge me my Arab. Now, Nicola comes back with the coat and brings it to Petkov, who can hardly believe his eyes. Where was it, Nicola? Hanging in the blue closet, madam. Uh, well, I... Uh, uh, Paul! Paul! Uh, I could have sworn it wasn't there. Age is beginning to tell me. I'm getting hallucinations. Help. Here, help me to change. Excuse me, Blanchley. Uh. Now, he begins changing coats. Nicola is acting as a valet. Now, Petkov is actually trying to get into his old coat. With Nicola helping him. Remember, I didn't take the bed of yours, Sergius. You'd better give Reina that Arab steed yourself, since you roast her expectations. Hey, Reina? He looks around at her, but she's again wrapped in the landscape. With a little gush of paternal aff affection and pride, he points her out to them and says, She's dreaming as usual. Uh, surely she shall not be the loser. So much the better for her. I should come off so cheaply, I expect. And Nicola goes on with the uh, discarded coat. Oh, now I feel at home at last. That's the last order. What? Finished? Finished. Haven't you anything for me to sign? Not necessary. His signature will do. Ah, uh, well, I think we've done a... Thundering good day's work. Can I do anything more? You had better both see the fellows that are to take these. Pack them off at once. Show them that I'd mark down the orders. The time I should hand them in by. Tell them that if they stop to drink or tell stories, if they're five minutes late, they'll have the skin taken off their backs. 
I'd say so. And if one of them is a man enough to spit in my face for insulting him, I'll buy his discharge and give him a penicillin. Now he is striding out, his humanity deeply outraged. Bluntly, just see that he talks to them. Just see that he talks to them properly, Major, will you? Quite right, Bluntly. Quite right. I'll see to it. He goes to the door, importantly, but hesitates on the threshold. Uh, by the by, Catherine, you may as well come too. They'll be far more frightened of you than of me. I dare say I had better. You will only splutter at them. What an army! They make cannons out of cherry trees and the officers send for their wives to keep discipline. So when Act 3 opens, what we see is all these characters, Blanchley, Petkov, Sergia, uh, sorry, Sergius, Reiner and Catherine in the library. And I told you already that Blanchley is single-handedly working out the routes to send cavalry to Philippopolis. Sergius is not helping in any way because he is not that familiar with this kind of work. And Petkov is relaxing. So this particular scene shows us the trade knowledge of Blanchley in comparison with the other men. He knows he has been a soldier for like 14 years now and he is 34 years old. So imagine he might have enrolled in the army when he was a mere 20 years old. So he knows more about army and routes and geography and all. So he has been a soldier over a decade and these other people, Petkov and Sergius, they became major, they came to the major rank only because of their social position. position So Petkov is feeling very comfortable. Petkov even asked, help you? Are you sure I can't help you in any way, Blanchley? But Blanchley says, no, I can manage. Sergius and I am managing it. And actually, Sergius is not doing anything. Sergius is saying, there is a division of labor. He is doing everything and I am just signing the orders. That is all I am doing. And Petkov is relaxing now. He is feeling very comfortable. But there is one thing that is bothering him. Ever since he came back home, he has been looking for his old coat. He couldn't find it inside the wardrobe. So he claims to have looked thoroughly in the wardrobe. But he was disappointed. He couldn't find the old coat. So, we are comfortable with our coat. And this is another instance of dramatic irony because the audience and Catherine and Raina, we all know that the coat just came back to the house. So, when Petkov first came to the house, the coat was not in the house. The coat came a few minutes later when Blanchley actually brought the coat in the carpet bag. So, that is another instance of dramatic irony. So Catherine gets up, she rings the, rings the electric bell. Electric bell in the button, library lana. So she rings the electric bell and Petkov is actually quite annoyed. Petkov asks, why are you showing off that bell for? So Petkov is very uh, sure that the coat is not in the wardrobe. Petkov is so, um, but you can't turn uh, two dressing gowns of Reiner's, your waterproof coat and my Macintosh into my old coat. wardrobe dressing gown, waterproof, raincoat, Macintosh. That is another kind of garment. Itra garments matre garments old coat so, my blue coat is actually missing. So, uh, my blue coat is actually missing. So, now um, Nicola comes. Nicola comes and Catherine um, orders Nicola to bring the coat from the wardrobe. Catherine is very sure that the coat is in the wardrobe. Why? Because um, she is sure that uh, Nicola put the coat back in there. Because Blanchley put the coat in Nicola put the coat in there. Then Catherine put the coat in there. Now all of a sudden a bet is placed between Catherine, Petkoff and Sergius about the existence of the coat in the closet. Catherine is very sure that coat is there. Petkoff and Sergius not so sure. So uh, they bet and they ask Blanchley if they, he wants to 
take part in the bed but blanchley says i don't want to because i am sure that the mistress is right why because he knows that the goat is in him in there because he brought the goat so this whole situation is actually a dramatic irony so finally nicola brings the goat and petkov is amazed at this because petkov nannayittu nokkiyirunnu ennittu onnum ee goat kandilla so the audience is aware of the presence and absence of the goat first it was absent then it is present so uh, again blanchley uh last military order of apathy to finish him blanchley is very fast in doing this duty he finishes the last military order and he does it with the ease of a professional he is such a professional finding these routes because the other men they have been doing it for a while and they couldn't figure it out whereas blanchley took one look at it and he could easily do it and then uh, serges and petkov asks if they can do something else and um, he he's gives instructions to serge serges na instructions aga kodukunnunde endu cheyanam ennakke ulladile adayathu okay you had both uh, you had better both see the fellows that are to take these pack them off at once and show them that i have marked on the orders the time they should hand them in by tell them that if they stop to drink or tell stories if they are five minutes late they'll have the skin taken off their backs but blanchley not only prepares these orders but he also has instructions for the messengers that the messengers or at the madi bidich on the nikkan baadilla they should he has marked the exact time in which these orders should be handed over and if they are five minutes late they should be punished so he is very particular about that and serge is so confident and so enthusiastic at the responsibility because serge satra nere onnum cheyada madi pidichirikkana app endengil cheyan prove cheyanulla or opportunity kitti nu vana serge is overtly excited at this point serge says i'll say so and if one of them is man enough to spit in my face for insulting him i'll buy his discharge and give him a pension so he is actually quite violent now he has a violent enthusiasm so blanchley is a bit alarmed blanchley fears that he will be rude to these messengers so blanchley asks major petkov to go with him so that he doesn't blurt out any bad words to these messengers in order to oversee serge's behavior to subordinates and what does petkov do petkov wants catherine's help can petkov parnole major okke anengil or order okke kodukkanu mathra ayalku oru endha vare oru power illa petkov ne catherine's powers le korchum kuda vishwasam undu that is again you can see um, you can see shaw's wit here a husband fearing the wife and all uh, so petkov asks catherine catherine you may as well come they will be far more frightened of you than me he messengers na ennekalum ninne aayirikum kudal pedi because he is sure in his wife's ferocity in giving orders so serges exits catherine and petkov follows now raina and blanchley are alone in the room so after months they are seeing each other and for the first time they are left alone to have a conversation a private conversation now uh, the dramatic tension once again increases on the stage let's see what happens after raina and blanchley are left alone so this is this was what was happening on the stage this is um, uh, this is sergius this is uh, our blanchley and this is raina look at this blanchley is actually uh, doing everything and sergius is just signing orders ഇതെല്ലാം വേറെ വേറെ നാടകങ്ങളിൽ നിന്നുള്ള സീൻസ് ആയതുകൊണ്ടാണ് കോസ്റ്റ്യൂം ചേഞ്ച് ഒക്കെ വരുന്നത് ഓക്കെ നോ ലെറ്റ് സി വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് വെൻ ബ്ലാൻഷ്ലി ആൻഡ് റൈന ആർ ലെഫ്റ്റ് അലോൺ ഇൻ ദ ലൈബ്രറി വുഡ് എൻ ആർമി ദേ മേക്ക് കാനൻസ് ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ചെറി ട്രീസ് ആൻഡ് ദി ഓഫീസർസ് സെൻഡ് ഫോർ देयर വൈഫ്സ് ടു കീപ് ഡിസിപ്ലിൻ ഹി ബിഗിൻസ് ടു ഫോൾഡ് ആൻഡ് ഡോക്കറ്റ് ദി പേപ്പേഴ്സ് റൈന ഹു ഹാസ് റിസൺ ഫ്രം ദി ദിവാൻ Uh, strolls down the room with a hand clasped behind her back and look mischievously at him you look ever so much nicer than when we met last time what have you done to yourself wash brush good night sleep and breakfast that's about all did you get back safely that morning quite thank you we are, were they angry with you for running away from sergius's charge no they were glad because they'd all just run away themselves it must have made a lovely story for them all about me and my room capital story but i only told it to one of them 
a particular friend on whose discretion you could absolutely rely absolutely hmm. he told it to my father and sergius the day you exchanged the prisoners no you don't mean that do you i do indeed but they don't know that it was in this house that you hid if sergius knew he would challenge you and kill you in a duel bless me then don't tell him can you realize what it is to me to deceive him i want to be quite perfect with sergius no meanness no smallness no deceit my relation to him is the one really beautiful and noble part of my life i hope you understand that you mean that you wouldn't like him to find out that the story about the ice pudding was a uh uh well, you know ah oh, don't talk of it in that flippant way i lied i know it but i did it to save your life he would have killed you that was the second time i ever uttered a falsehood do you remember the first time i no well i i present yes and i told the officer who was searching for you that you were not present true should have remembered it ah uh, it is natural that you should forget it first it cost you nothing it cost me a lie a lie my dear young lady don't let that worry you remember i'm a soldier now what are the two things that happen to a soldier so often that he comes to think of nothing think nothing of them one is hearing people tell lies the other is getting his life saved in all sorts of ways by all sorts of people and so he becomes a creature incapable of faith and of gratitude do you like gratitude i don't if pity is akin to love gratitude is akin to the other thing if you are incapable of gratitude you are incapable of any noble sentiment even animals are grateful oh i see now exactly what you think of me you were not surprised to hear me lie to you it was something i probably did every day every hour that is how men think of women there's reason in everything you said you'd only told two lies in your whole life dear young lady isn't that a rather short allowance i'm quite a straightforward man myself but it wouldn't last me a whole morning do you know sir that you are insulting me i can't help it when you strike that no b attitude and speak in that thrilling voice i admire you but i find it impossible to believe a single word you say captain blanchley yes do you mean what you said just now do you know what you said just now i do i i i, I... How did you find me out? <laughs> instinct, dear young lady, instinct and experience of the world. Do you know you are the first man I ever met who did not take me seriously? You mean, don't you, that I am the first man that has ever taken you quite seriously? Yes, I suppose I do mean that. How strange it is to be talked to in such a way. You know, I've always gone on like that. I mean the noble attitude and the thrilling voice. I did it when I was a tiny child to my nurse. She believed in it. I do it before my parents. They believe in it. I do it before Sergius. He believes in it. Yes, he's little in that line himself, is he not? Do you think so? You know him better than I do. Ah, uh, well, what does it matter? I suppose now that you find out, you despise me. No, my dear young lady, no. No, no a thousand times. It's part of your youth, part of your charm. I like all the rest of them, the the nurse, your parents, Sergius, um, your infatuated admirer. Really? Hunt Alf's health, really and truly. But what did you think of me giving you my portrait? Your portrait? You never gave me your portrait. Do you mean to say you never got it? No. When did you send it to me? I did not send it to you. It was in the pocket of that coat. Oh, oh, I I never found it. It it must be there still. There still for my father to find the first time he puts his hand in his pocket. Oh, how could you be so stupid? It doesn't matter. I suppose it's only a photograph. How can he tell who it was intended for? Tell him that uh, he put it there himself. Yes, that is so clever. So clever. What shall I do? Ah, I see you wrote something on it. That was rash. Oh, to have done such a thing for you? 
who care no more except to laugh at me. Oh, are you sure nobody has touched it? Well, I can't be quite sure. You, you see, I couldn't carry it about with me all the time. One can't take much luggage on active service. What did you do with it? When I got through to Piro, I had to put it in safekeeping somehow. I thought of the railway cloakroom, but that's the surest place to get looted in modern warfare, so I pawned it. Pawned it? I know it doesn't sound nice, but it was much the safest plan. I redeemed it the day before yesterday. Heaven only knows whether the pawnbroker cleared out the pockets or not. You, you have a low shopkeeping mind. You think of things that would never come into a gentleman's head. That's the Swiss national character, dear lady. Oh, I wish I had never met you. She flounces away and sits at the window, uh, fuming. So we just saw the exchange between Raina and Captain Lunchley. So this is the first time they got to be together alone um, ever since they met after months um, of their nightly adventure. So now dramatic tension is rising up again. Now, first of all, Raina inquires after Blanchley's well-being. So, go kelle and the chodi kyaana. So, Raina asks you, you look much nicer than the last time we met. What have you done to yourself? And Blanchley, without looking up, he says, washed, brushed, good night, sleep and breakfast. And then, kari vanna, and the uri vritti mene vanna, illa adha muna alu saurangha dhe kelle kari vanna. Inni pa nyang kuluchu, palla lechu, nanna ita bakshan oga kari saurangi, vannu adhinde yana uri vritti okke olladhu. And then, and then Raina asked and the Ravale safe attitude. Did you get back safely that morning? Yes. Now Raina asks, Did you tell anybody about that nightly adventure? That night adventure with me and you? And uh, Blanchley says, Yes, I only shared that with my best friend, only one person. And Raina now gets mad because it is that person who mentioned about. Raina and Catherine rescuing Blanchley to Petkoff and Sergius. Petkoff not a Sergius not a Parni or the but a friend of the Varenurana. Now Blanchley says that don't blame him much, he is no more. That man, that friend is no more. He had a very pathetic death. Uh, put it the real Karl Nakati, but I am my and in a barrier. For the first time, Raina is getting uh, a very gory picture of the war friend. For her, war friend was uh, all about heroism and romanticism. Now, for the first time, somebody is actually giving her a real picture about what happens in the battlefield with all the terrifying details and all, death and devastation and all. So, you can see that this is the start of resolution. The drama at a peak in a petting and angle quality parana and it under. There will be a Adim or a drama to Danga, then Mumbai and other Samhavanga petting Namka Korcha Arvagitim and an exposition. After that, there will be rising action. That is where dramatic tension rises. Or a conflict on down. Our conflict in a peak point let them other than a climax in the Varena. So for us, our climax happens when. Uh, Captain Blanchley comes back or he finally decides to stay together uh, with the Petkoff family. Actually, it is coming. Then happens resolution. Resolution when we take a dramatic peak. Things are falling back in its place. So this point is the start of resolution because Raina reveals to Blanchley that the men in the family know about Blanchley's night adventure, but they do not know that it happened in this particular household. Then Raina says, you know, I, I lied for you. I, I can't be fake with Sergius and all. So Raina claims the nobility and loftiness in her relation with Sergius. Sergius might all end a relation on a Satharan or relation on the Allah. Our relation is much noble and prestigious than normal uh, romantic relations. And she says that by saving you, I have compromised my relation, the, and the, the nobility of my relation with my Sergius. But we already know that the relation is fake and faulty. It was revealed to us in Act 2 itself how dramatic and over the top their relationship actually is. Now, Raina claims that 
ഷി ഹാസ് ലൈഡ് ഓൺലി ടു ടൈംസ് ഇൻ ഹർ ലൈഫ് രണ്ട് തവണ മാത്രമേ ജീവിതത്തിൽ കള്ളം പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുള്ളൂ ഫസ്റ്റ് ടൈം വാസ് ടു സേവ് ബ്ലൺഷ്ലി ഫ്രം ദ റഷ്യൻ ഓഫീസർ ദ ബ്ലൺഷ്ലി ഡസൻ റിമെമ്പർ ദിസ് അറ്റ് ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇപ്പൊ റൈന രണ്ട് തവണ കള്ളം പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുള്ളൂ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് ആദ്യത്തെ ഒരു കള്ളം ബ്ലൺഷ്ലിക്ക് ഓർമ്മയുണ്ട് കാരണം ബ്ലൺഷ്ലി വന്ന സമയത്ത് ബ്ലൺഷ്ലി വെൻ ബ്ലൺഷ്ലി ഫേസ്റ്റ് ഷോഡ് അപ്പ് ഇൻ ദ ഗാർഡൻ റൈന ആക്സിഡന്റലി കോൾസ് ഹിം ചോക്ലേറ്റ് ക്രീം സോൾജ് Now, uh, to save herself from that story, she makes up a false story about how she made a chocolate cream soldier. Now, to save herself from that story, she makes up a false story about how she made a chocolate cream ornament for an ice pudding and how Nicola uh, crushed that uh, chocolate cream soldier ornament. So, uh, Blanchley remembers that, but Blanchley doesn't remember the other lie. Now, Raina becomes really mad at him. നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഓർമ്മയില്ല നിങ്ങൾക്ക് വേണ്ടിയാണ് ഞാൻ ആ കള്ളം പറഞ്ഞത് ഐ ഐ ലൈ ടു ദാറ്റ് റഷ്യൻ ഓഫീസർ ഹു സെർച്ച്ഡ് മൈ റൂം ദാറ്റ് ദർ ഇസ് നോ ബഡി ഇൻ മൈ റൂം ന വി നോ ദാറ്റ് റൈന ഇസ് ഫേക്കിംഗ് ഇന്നസെൻസ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ദീസ് ലോഫ്റ്റി സെന്റിമെന്റ്സ് ഡു യു റിയലി ബിലീവ് ദാറ്റ് ജി ഷി ഹാസ് എവർ ടോൾ ടു ലൈഫ് ഓൺലി ഇൻ ഹർ ലൈഫ് ടൈം നോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ക്വൈറ്റ് ദ കോൺട്രറി ഓഫ് വാട്ട് ഷി ഓൾറെഡി ഇസ് സോ റൈന ബിക്കംസ് ആംഗ്രി അറ്റ് ആംഗ്രി അറ്റ് ബ്ലാൻഷ്ലി ബിക്കോസ് ഹി ഫൊഗോട്ട് അബൌട്ട് how raina lied for him and protected him she says ah oh, it is natural that you should forget it it cost you nothing it cost me a lie a lie now she is becoming really dramatic ningalkonnu nashtam illallo nashtangal ok enikku mathrame ullu i lied for you can you imagine i raina petkov i lied for a person like you now raina is being very dramatic and he, she is adopting romantic standards of personality now she claims that she is not a person who lies all the time and that it, it was the first time that she lied ever in her life to save this man's life do you really believe that raina is like that let's find out Now, Blanchley replies that Blanchley is very cold to all this. He is very cold to all this. He is very cold to all this. Blanchley is very cold to all this. Because Blanchley is a war friend who is a soldier in the battlefield. He knows that he, he is exposed to lies. Many people has, have lied for him, lied to him. And also many people had saved his life many times too in the battlefield. So, this is not a good thing for him. For him, it's actually a very common thing. Lies and getting his life saved. Now, Raina is really angry at Blanchley because Raina has accused him of getting his life saved. Now, Raina is really angry at Blanchley because Raina accuses him of not being uh, thankful. Lack of gratitude. Blanchley is not a good thing for him. That's why Raina is outraged at the lack of gratitude of this man. So what Raina dramatizes, it is quite normal for Blanchley because he has been a soldier all his life, most of his life. It's part of his day-to-day -day life. Now Raina is outraged at the lack of gratitude of this man. To which Blanchley replies that, if pity is akin to love, gratitude is akin to the other thing. For pity, if you say that you are a person who is 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 a blanchly uh, vicharikkana so he doesn't share all these lofty sentiments and all he is actually quite he pictures himself as an anti romantic man he doesn't have all these romantic ideals like surges like he gets uh, outraged at suggestions that his uh, potential wife that is raina might have a lover and you know he is not at all practical whereas Blanchley is very practical and he knows uh, how the world works in reality. So, he is what you can call an anti-romantic hero. So, he says that at war front feelings like pity and gratitude are of no value. So, this is all really shocking to uh, Raina that somebody can actually uh, think this way. Uh, anyway, Uh, now what happens is uh, blanchly uh, raina says some raina acts in all this endo uh, parayinga dramatic act ingena act cheyunu appo blanchly parayna oru karyam aanu blanchly says something when you strike that noble attitude and speak in that thrilling voice i admire you but i find it impossible to believe a single word you say so what blanchly says is when you are being dramatic 
ലൈക്ക് ഈ ഒരു നോബിൾ ആറ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡ് യു ഹാവ് ദിസ് ത്രില്ലിങ് വോയിസ് നോർമൽ ആൾക്കാർ സംസാരിക്കുന്നത് പോലെയല്ല ഭയങ്കര എന്താ പറയുക നാടകീയതയൊക്കെയാണ് സംസാരത്തിലൊക്കെ വരുന്നത് സോ യു ഹാവ് ദിസ് നോബിൾ ആറ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ആൻഡ് ത്രില്ലിങ് വോയിസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ആക്ച്വലി ക്വൈറ്റ് അമ്യൂസിംഗ് ടു വാച്ച് യു ആൻഡ് ലിസൺ ടു യു വെൻ യു ആർ being this way i even admire you but i don't believe a single word you say when your voice is like that it is not the real you now she is at first she so blanchly actually refuses to believe raina's claims of loftiness and he also dismisses the notion of her only having ever having uttered two lies in her lifetime അപ്പോൾ ബ്ലൻഷ്ലി പറയാണ് രണ്ട് കള്ളങ്ങളോ ജീവിതത്തിൽ നീ രണ്ട് കള്ളം മാത്രമേ പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുള്ളൂ അത് ബ്ലൻഷ്ലിക്ക് ഒരു ദിവസം രാവിലെ തൊട്ട് ഉച്ച വരെ തികയ്ക്കാൻ പോലും രണ്ട് കള്ളം പോരാ ബിക്കോസ് ഹീ നോസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ ആർ ഡേ ടു ഡേ ലൈഫ് വി ഹാവ് ടു ലൈ ഫോർ സെർട്ടൻ തിങ്സ് വൈറ്റ് ലൈസ് നമ്മൾ പച്ചക്കള്ളം എന്ന് പറയുന്നതല്ല വൈറ്റ് ലൈസ് മീൻസ് ദീസ് ആർ ലൈസ് വിച്ച് വുഡ് നോട്ട് ഹാം എനി ബഡി ആൻഡ് വി കാൻറ്റ് ആക്ച്വലി ലിവ് ദിസ് ലൈഫ് വിത്തൗട്ട് ലൈങ് ടു പീപ്പിൾ so that is another anti romantic trait in blanchley because he has the nerve to actually accept that he is a person who lies and he is a person who is lied to often so uh, blanchley he dismisses this notion that raina has only ever uttered two lies in her lifetime so we can see that he sees right through her pretenses idellam raina da pretension mathramana raina ingena kallam parayarilla nakke ullu akshe adu manasilaakki ore ore aalu captain blanchley aan so she is first shocked at this accusation but then raina um, so she says captain blanchley do you know what you said just now do you know what you said just now and then she says how did you find me out how did you really understand that i am being fake when i am using this noble attitude and thrilling voice yam verum aalkarude munnil abhinayike maatramana adu aadhyamaya manasilaakki oru manushya ennu parayna ningalana captain blanchley how did you understand this how did you find me out see this is captain blanchley and raina together it in an enactment of the drama so uh, blanchley says that instincts i have got gut instinct i had a little feeling undarunnu karanam ee parayna raina kaanikkunnathu pole the raina project cheyina oru picture alla sherikkum parna raina so blanchley's instincts told him that raina is not the person she projects herself to be she is not as noble or lofty as she projects herself to be and he also claims that i am the first man who takes you to who took you seriously all the others actually treat you like a uh, like a baby a pet doll uh, or something like for example the father for petkov considers her an innocent little pet he admires his daughter he thinks that everything the daughter does or says has innocence all over it whereas sergius considers raina to be an absolute realization of all romantic ideals even sergius is absolutely romantic he also has this elevated sentiments and all idinde ellathinte oru murthi bhavam aanu raina ennaanu sergius karuthunnu but only this man this is the first man in her life who has understood her for what she really is she is an intelligent woman and for the first time somebody understands this about her the rainas reveals more details about herself she admits that she is um, first started using this thrilling voice and noble attitude with her nurse ivlu valare cheriya oru kutti ayirunna appo ivale nokuna oru nanny oru nurse inde adthana ivlu aadhyamayittu ingena oru attitude it and she started she believed in it she really believed that raina is all this uh, goody to shoes valare nalla oru endha paraya oru tender aayittulla oru paavakuttiye pole oru kuttiyana ennake ee nurse believe it and then she did it to both her parents and both of them believed in it but we know that catherine doesn't actually fully believe in, in it catherine knows certain things about raina that raina listens to people's conversation and the moment somebody mentions her she announces herself like aduru valare endha pariya aarengal nammale petti samsarikkana evide ende moolu evide adu kettu kettond ingane irikkana eppana enne mention cheyna aa samayath chaadi veena announce cheya yan evide undallo enn ingane parayna appo adu enna nacha it is it actually suggests innocence and you know peppiness and all bubbly aitulla oru nature aanu rainakke and raina prove cheyan vendittaan idella cheyina but catherine knows this but catherine ariyam nalladhu rainakke ariyilla ennaanu namukku ee oru sequence il ninda manasilavunnathu 
anyway blanchley replies that serges himself is a bit dramatic even serges believes that raina is all this noble attitude and thrilling voice but blanchley says that serges himself is a little bit in that line he is also a bit dramatic now raina is worried now that blanchley knows what she really uh, is does she does he hate her എന്നെ ശരിക്കും ഞാൻ ആരാണെന്ന് മനസ്സിലായതിനു ശേഷം എന്നെ ഇപ്പൊ വെറുക്കുന്നുണ്ടാവില്ലേ എന്ന് ചോദിച്ചപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് ബ്ലാൻഷ്ലി റിപ്ലൈസ് ദാറ്റ് നോ ഓൺ ദ കോൺട്രറി സോ ഓൺ ദ കോൺട്രറി നോ മൈ ഡിയർ യങ് ലേഡി നോ 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 അ തൗസൻഡ് ടൈംസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് യുവർ യൂത്ത് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് യുവർ ചാം ഐ എം ലക്ക് ലൈക്ക് ഓൾ ദ റെസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ദം ദ നേഴ്സ് യുവർ പേരൻസ് സെർജസ് ഐ ആം യുവർ ഇൻഫാക്ച്വേറ്റഡ് അഡ്മയർ സോ ബ്ലാൻഷ്ലി അഡ്മിറ്റ്സ് ദാറ്റ് നോ ഐ ഡു നോട്ട് ഹെയ്റ്റ് യു on the contrary quite the opposite i am like all the others it is part of your youth and part of your charm you are quite young and you are quite a charming young lady and like your nurse your parents and surges i am your infatuated admirer now blanchly this is a very tender moment till this point blanchly actually uh, claimed that he is an anti romantic person now he himself is claiming him to be a little bit romantic and we also understand why blanchly showed up with the coat he could have actually sent it with somebody edengil oru servant inde kayil vellam coat koduthu vidarnu but why why did captain blanchly come in person to this house maybe to catch another glimpse of raina and to talk to her he has certain feelings for this lady who saved him so we finally understand that blanchly is also quite infatuated with raina okay now raina raina ke aage am sandoshay kanam blanchly kum sansneha okke undu nakku manasilay now raina asks so what did you think of me giving you my portrait now blanchly says what portrait i did not get any portrait did you send it to me so what really happened that that night when raina and catherine were put, uh, rescuing blanchly by dressing him in petkoff's coat raina put her portrait inside the pocket of her father's coat pa coat in the pocket la blanchly pinna kaana vendi raina raina ede oru photograph adinathu vechittundayo so this is another complication where is this photo blanchly never saw it he never put his hand inside the pocket and retrieved it, this photograph so they both surmise that this portrait must still be in the coat pocket ee pocket nathu thane ippolum kadappunde and where is this pocket now in uh, in the last scene in this act uh, we see that nicola has brought the coat back and um petkoff major petkoff has put on this coat appo ipo aa coat major petkoff inde dehathu kedappunde ana petkoff coat comfortable allayirunnu ayal anneru ittirunna coat la ayal adu maati nikola ayala palaye coat kondu varum aa coat nagathi pa ayal keeritund so there is a portrait of rainas inside the coat uh, pocket in the inside the pocket of the coat which major petkoff is now wearing at the moment so any moment now petkoff can actually discover this portrait but now blanchly asked what is the po- what is the problem in a father finding the daughter's portrait in in the pocket of his coat what is wrong with it now raina reveals one more thing raina has actually written something behind that photo a photo de back le captain blanchly ke vendi aanu ennolla reethil endo ezhuthittund now this is a real complication if major petkoff sees this inscription he will understand that something is going on in this house behind his back now blanchly uh, now raina says are you quite sure that the portrait is inside uh the coat itself maybe you took it out or something you didn't notice it ningal ariyada vera evadengilum vechittundengilo so blanchly reveals another thing he says that the coat was really heavy for him to carry after a while when he was safe so at first he thought of putting it in the railway cloak room appa railway il ingane railway station la sadhanangal ok sookshikkunna room il kodukkanana aandyam yeah let me judge but he thought that that is a place where uh, things get stolen easily okay um i not okay i uh, forgot to mention something when raina when blanchly says i am your infatuated admirer uh, raina is very pleased she says really 
are you do you really like me and blanchly says something in german hand off hearts hers it means hand over heart it means hand over heart nenju kai vachu parayana ninne enikku ishtamana i am your admirer and i am infatuated with you adu kaiyittaani portrait ne pattiyittulla discussion akka varunnu okay uh, so blanchly says something about this book Uh, quote at first he wanted to put it in the railway clock room uh, but because he thought that this is a place where it can get stolen uh, he did something with it he pawned it he quote ayal panayam vechu or pawn broker inde aduthu poi ayal adu panayam vechu now this is really shocking for raina how could blanchly do such a thing with her father's coat it is quite ungentlemanly because this coat is the object which saved him from persecution somebody might must have grabbed him and taken him a prisoner and killed him if he wasn't wearing this coat which belonged to a bulgarian so how could he treat such an object in such a flippant manner now this is too much for raina raina pawned it and uh, you have a low shop keeping mind you are like a shop keeper ningal labha nashtangalde kanakku mathrame nokkarillu ningalku oru kaaryathinu oru value illa heaven only knows so you think of um, things that would never come into a gentleman's head oru gentleman de manasile varatha kaaryangal okkeyana ningada thalayil verunne now she is really mad at blanchly so angry at blanchly so uh, she says oh i wish i had never met you she is so angry now now she is sitting near the window she is fuming she is really that angry now luca enters the library let us stop this class here so we have just discussed two scenes now the first scene was with blanchly sergius uh, captain uh, sorry major petkoff uh, catherine and raina sitting in the library discussing about the army trade and after that when they all leave we see raina and captain blanchly and we get a few more details about what happened in between act 1 and act 2 uh, that the blanchly poi kind of blanchly end cheyadu because he couldn't carry the coat on his back he had to pawn it with a pawn broker and um, after that time he has been quite good uh, he brushed and all uh, he washed brushed uh, he slept well he's been eating well and all so he came back here we understand the reason the intention behind his coming back we also understand that even though captain blanchly claims himself to be anti romantic in quite a few things and areas he has a romantic spirit inside him that might be why he came back to major petkoff's house he also admits that he is an infatuated admirer of raina and he holds his hand over his heart as he says it so this indeed is a complication now he has admitted that he is in love with a woman who is engaged to another man now let us see what is going to happen in the following uh events in the next classes or next videos thank you so much for watching this video so far and thank you so much for your attention and i hope you all are keeping well and happy be happy and be safe have fun bye